So what I'd like to introduce to you today is uh, a database called drugrepurposing.info, which is at drugrepurposing.info. Um, Numericus is a consultancy which um, I've worked in repurposing for about 20 years, and I'm still very passionate about it. Uh, we provide consultancy services on strategic direction in the area, and also I've helped to initiate a number of clinical stage programs which are progressing through um, uh, uh, clinical study. So what, what uh, drugrepurposing.info is, is a large, well-curated and highly referenced database of functionally effective repurposing information. And, and the reason why I thought it would be appropriate for this talk was because, well, two reasons. Firstly, because the whole point of this conference, I think, is about establishing a community of people who are interested in repurposing, learning from each other. And there, there's a broad array of um, different ideas, different realities in repurposing which are featured in this database. And I hope that that's why it can establish, we can establish a community. And the, the database is um, interactable with by people who use it. They can add information. I'll explain about that as we go forward. Um, I've divided the world into compounds, mechanisms, and indications. And this is useful because you can go any which way around this circle. You can, you can go from any, two of, any one of those three uh, boxes to another box, either backwards or forwards. And you can go from, uh, through those linkage ovals, which are shown in green. So by clicking on one of those things, you can, um, you, you can go from, say, compounds to mechanisms, or mechanisms to indications, or, or compounds to indications, or backwards and forwards. Um, the stats on the database, I think, are pretty comprehensive. I'm not saying they're completely comprehensive, and I don't think it's possible to be completely pretty comprehensive. But that's one of the reasons why I'd like to establish a community, because by having everybody's involvement, um, I think we can make it more useful for all of us, rather like a Wikipedia for repurposing. Currently, it's composed of, well, you can see the stats there, there are nearly 3,000 connections between mechanisms and indications, all of which potentially are repurposable uh, projects which can be, can be taken forward. And the, the compounds database includes 10,000 abandoned compounds, which are obviously substrates for repurposing. It also includes about 10,000 uh, information on 10,000 compounds of which are on the market for which secondary mechanisms of action have been identified. And that can also be quite useful from a repurposing perspective. Um, re users can register for free. And you can also get complete access to the search capabilities of the database so long as you contribute. Um, and contributing is easy. You just have to identify a reference, give it a few more characterizable aspects, and, and, and away you go. Um, and one other thing, uh, Find a Cure is predicated upon the idea of treasure your exceptions. It was one of um, Nick Sero's uh, binding phrases. And that's because diseases are linked to one another. And one of the aspects of this database, which I think is important, is that it's not just linkages between compounds, mechanisms, and indications. It's also between linkages across indications. So, and I, I explain about that in a little bit more detail. So I thought, looking at the program list, what, what about FOP? What about fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, if that's the right phrase? And um, I hadn't looked at this before. It's rare disease. I'm not saying the database is, is, is comprehensive, but this is an indication of how comprehensive it is. So three of the approaches, which are uh, linkages between mechanism and in indication, are three of the things which we talked about earlier in the day. Um, you'll notice on the right-hand side of this table, this is the result from doing a search for what indications are involved in FOP. On, on the right-hand side, you see what potential chemical classes are, are um, associated with these mechanisms. Um, and the blue color and the turquoise color indicate different chemical databases, which, which are accessible through this, through this slide. Um, if you click on the turquoise box under the line which says AL2 inhibitor, it comes up with a particular chemical which has an off-target activity as an ALK2 inhibition. So we heard today about 
saracatinib, which is a, a known ALK2 inhibitor. What you may not have realized is that, um, the bell's just about to go off, is that the, uh, there's another, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors are, are wired in their variety of um, uh, activities. And this is an example of an anti-cancer drug, which is, which is active in that area. And lastly, but no, by, by no means least, there are connections between, if you, if you display this in a graphical sense, you can go from a network of mechanisms through to a network of chemicals which are in, uh, addressable by those mechanisms. Thank you.